The average food bill for one person living in America is between $165 to $345 per month, making it one of the top three monthly expenses for the vast majority of people. I decided to see if I could scrape together some meals and have a zero dollar budget this week for grocery shopping and just use what I had available in my pantry. Here's what our pantry looks like at the beginning of the week. Quite a bit of stuff, but you'll notice we don't have a lot of fresh stuff left. So there's definitely some canned goods, some rice and grains, some cereal, a little bit of snacks. And then here's our fridge. There's not a whole bunch, mostly it just liquids and things to drink. Our fridge is usually packed full with produce there is still some left that we could definitely make use of there's a little bit of cheese and some tortillas we did have some really sad bananas and a couple of apples left over Hey beautiful people, it's Courtney. Today we're gonna to be scraping together some meals. I'm gonna be sharing with you all some money-saving tips. And I decided to call this the zero dollar grocery challenge, but I've also heard this called like the pantry challenge as well. This is a super fun option to do once a month or so, or even maybe once a quarter to really just clean out your pantry and also save some money along the way. So if you all enjoyed this video, I also wanna create a $25 weekly shopping where I only cook with those items that I get. So let me know if you like to see that as well. But today we're cleaning out the pantry. The very first thing I wanted to do was a little overview of the food we have. Now, normally we eat a lot of fresh produce. And so this week we're definitely not doing a ton of that. We do have a few things left that I'm going to use up first before they go bad. And I'm still going to try to keep these somewhat healthy, somewhat well balanced. So I'm I'm gonna do my best here, not as healthy as usual, um, but we're gonna make it work. Also, anything that was on its way out, like these bananas here, I went ahead and froze them, and I'm gonna use them later in the week. You could use them for smoothies, banana bread, and it's a great way to keep them when you're not gonna eat them before they go bad. Let's start with breakfast. Breakfast was a category we had a really good variety in, and I think that's because a lot of these items are more shelf stable or just last a little bit longer. We had more oatmeal than we knew what to do with. All these oats have been in here for so long, I think I'm going to finish these up. It says use within seven days if it's been opened. I mean, it smells fine. We also had some packets of oatmeal, which I don't personally love because they're loaded with sugar, but Andy likes them. What's the matter? You didn't want my breakfast sandwich? Mm -hmm. Too much food. <laughs> Too much food. I need the macros. I need to get out of here. I actually really like this stuff. It's probably loaded with sugar, but. Yeah. Good, eat those up because I don't really like those. <laughs> we luckily had a lot of eggs, so something I was also able to do was throw together a hash. And what I love about hashes is you could kind of mix and match with absolutely whatever you have in your pantry. I'm gonna put together a little breakfast hash from some random ingredients. That's what's great about hash. You could kind of just mix in whatever. Normally pepperoni kind of weird, but I'm gonna try it and see how it tastes. Once these are open, you should pretty much use them soon. So I'm gonna use these before all my eggs. I am gonna add in one egg, three potatoes, cheese, and like half an onion. Another thing we really like to do for breakfast, sometimes lunch, sometimes even dinner, is acai bowls. I feel like you can never go wrong with these. There's never a bad time. We're in the middle of winter and we still love them. And I used some of the frozen bananas that I previously froze that were on the verge of going bad. And I had some other frozen fruit I could mix in. And also I had one acai packet left. And if you don't happen to have any acai packets, you really don't need it. It could still be like a smoothie bowl and a little tip that I have to make them nice and thick and just different than a smoothie is to make sure you're using a very small amount of liquid in this case I'm using almond milk but also you want everything you're putting in it to be frozen I'm not even a big banana person but I feel like the banana really makes the base thicker creamier and it really just helps it come together now honestly when we make these bowls at home we don't top them with more fruit just because there's so much 
fresh fruit already in the base. But what I do like to do is load up the toppings to make it a little more filling, like granola, peanut butter, honey, any kind of nuts. I had some baking nuts. I had some coconut like flakes left over from baking. So those all make great toppings. If you have chia seeds or any kind of seeds you wanna add, all of it, really good. You could kind of just throw on whatever you have available. Now I'm not gonna lie, lunches for us are very, very basic. A lot of times what I really like to do is I do not have time to like sit there and cook lunch. So a lot of times I just make a lot for dinner. That way it makes leftovers for lunch for the next couple days. So you'll see with the dinners, I typically make a big batches of it. And that's another like money saving tip because you're not using a ton of different ingredients and cooking various meals. But another option, if I am gonna cook my lunch, it is typically this, and that is a quesadilla. Some refried beans, we got some tortillas, some cheese, and some jalapeno pepper slices. Thank you. Looks good, babe. So anything can work for quesadillas. We've done this so many ways with different leftovers we've had. Another day, another quesadilla for lunch. I eat these for lunches, dinners, just a snack. It really just depends, but I, we do make them so often. And what's great is a little bit goes a long way. Like one can of refried beans could last like five or six quesadillas. So that's a great option to use up some rice if you want to, beans, some shredded chicken, some canned chicken. Just throw it all in a quesadilla. For all of our dinners this week, we pretty much stuck to soups, chilies, and stir fries because you could kind of improvise with them a lot. They're just really easy. They make a really large quantity. If you have a large family, for us it worked well because we had a lot of leftovers with them. What do you think? That is pretty darn good. good you tried bread. the bread? Yeah, I tried the bread. All right, it's a lazy Friday night and I'm gonna use up some of the last bit of our fresh produce by making some vegetable lo mein. So I have a green pepper left, an orange pepper. I'm gonna shred a carrot, chop up some of this garlic. Biggest secret is we have been loving to make dumplings. So we don't have like a ton left, but we do have some that we froze um, just because like when you buy dumpling wrappers, it comes with so many. And this is perfect. You could heat it up for soups. I'm just gonna pan fry and steam them though so they get a little crispiness to them. This is like our third or fourth time making them, so good. Um, this is the first time that I'm using the stuff that I froze, so we're gonna see how that turns out. So really quickly to show you how I cook the dumplings, I just throw them in the pan. I let them cook for about four minutes and then you take a half a cup of water, you pour it in and cover it so they could steam and finish cooking. For my veggies, I just added in the shredded carrots at last minute, and then I'm gonna add in my noodles. What's really great about a stir fry, whether it's lo mein or whether it's like fried rice, you could really use whatever vegetables you have. I had peppers, half an onion, and a carrot. So super simple. Um, if you have broccoli, cabbage, you could pretty much get super creative, sugar peas, just throw it all in there. Add some olive oil, some soy sauce, teriyaki sauce, voila. All done, took about 20 minutes, so really, really quick too. Obviously, if I was making the dumplings from scratch, it would have taken a lot longer. Now for our snacks of the week, the snacks was the category we were lacking the most because we literally had nothing. We did have a few apples left from the previous week. I was able to have them whole as a snack with some peanut butter, which was great. And I also used an apple to make some apple bread because I was craving something sweet and it only took one apple to actually make it. So I felt like it was a good bang for our buck and we weren't wasting a ton of fresh produce to make like an unhealthy snack. So I really enjoy this apple bread. I'll leave the recipe on the screen for you as well. And something Andy did this week, he wasn't planning to do for this video or anything. It just happened to fall, you know, during this week. So I thought I would share it is we had a ton, a big, like honestly, probably a five gallon bag of venison in the freezer that he was going to make jerky with. I never understood why it was so expensive to buy beef jerky in the store. Now I understand. How many hours do you have in this? Four, four hours to get to the I think point. more than that. That ended up being a really awesome snack as well. It took them a lot of time. It was a lot of laborious work, but it came out really good. I also wanted to give you some tips that kind of helped me through this week of cooking. And number one is it really helps if you have some staples in your pantry. And by staples, I mean like flour, sugar, yeast, 
um, potatoes, onions, just because you can make so many things from scratch with them. So for example, one night I made some homemade bread and it's so easy to make, honestly, and it tastes a million times better than store-bought bread, but it's really easy and all you need is flour and yeast and salt and water. So it's so simple and you can make so much of this. You could very easily make pasta with it or other desserts or just more bread for your family, maybe some homemade pretzels. So if you just have some staples, it really helps along with potatoes and onions because both of those I feel like you could buy in very large quantities. We always have leftover potato and onions and you could use them in so many different things, whether it's potato soup, whether it's a hash, whether it's like an omelet. So there's just a lot of things you could do with them. You could kind of bulk up some of your meals with the potatoes and the onions just add a nice flavor if you don't have a lot of options for that either. Another thing that's kind of helpful, obviously, is anything that's gonna add flavor, whether it's making sure you have plenty of seasonings, different sauces or dressings. I have like this bag of fresh garlic cloves that will last me like a month. You could have very simple ingredients and as long as you have something to kind of spice it up and make it like more interesting to eat, it makes it a lot better. For us, if you couldn't tell, we love jalapenos. We put them on a lot of different things. It adds a lot of different spice and flavor and you could take something basic like a refried bean quesadilla, throw some jalapenos on it and it adds a nice spice and just more depth to the flavor. We add it on our hashes, we add it on our breakfast sandwiches, we add them in the chili, the soup. So we pretty much add them in quite a bit of things and it's really helpful and a little bit goes a really long way. Another tip is to be able to improvise and be able to cook without a recipe. Now, funny story, I love you mom, don't get mad at me, but my mom cannot improvise a meal to save her life. The other night she was making nachos and she asked me what she should put on them and I was like, mom, you could put whatever you want on them. You just have to improvise, you just have to put what you have. Maybe you have some beans, maybe you have some guacamole, maybe you have like whatever you want to add, just throw it on there. But learning to improvise and learning how to cook without a recipe definitely helps a lot. For example, a lot of my recipes called for milk. We don't use regular milk, we have almond milk and you just improvise, I just replace it. I don't even think twice, I just, eh, it'll work. So I throw it together. My last tip is to freeze things, whether it's fruit about to go bad or vegetables about to go bad. If you're not gonna eat them right away, just freeze them so you can use them later in soups and stews and smoothies. And that way you're not wasting it, but also you're getting more use out of it. Another thing is if you make a ton for dinner one night and you know you're gonna have a bunch of leftovers, but you know by day four or five, you're gonna be tired of those leftovers, just freeze half of it and save it for later. That's kind of what we did with the dumplings. We made enough for dinner, we made enough to have leftovers, and then we just had so much extra. So I froze some and I was able to cook some of them this week. This is what our pantry looks like at the end of the week. So I was able to finish up our bag of potatoes, most of the onions, a bag of flour, the box of cornstarch, um, finished up a lot, a lot of stuff down here. I don't even remember it all, but definitely some oats and yeah, a bunch of stuff. And then down here, put a little dent in it, but still have actually quite a bit left. Okay, the fridge isn't too, too different. Just has some leftovers, still have quite a bit of eggs. We didn't eat too many of those, but all of our, a lot of our stuff is gone. Cheese almost gone, a lot of tortillas gone. Still have plenty of carrots and celery and some jalapenos. So that was my zero dollar grocery challenge. I hope you maybe found some inspiration to clean out your own pantry, skip grocery shopping for the week, maybe save some money. This was actually something I enjoyed doing. I kind of liked planning out the different meals and figuring out what I could scrape together to make a good dinner or lunch or breakfast. I definitely want to keep doing this like on a monthly basis or every other month. It really helps clean out your pantry and use up things before they expire and that way they don't get just pushed to the back of the shelf. So I hope you found some helpful tips. Maybe you're inspired to do this yourself. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below and I will see you next Saturday with a brand new video. Bye.